Hello, and welcome to the Descendant Saga YouTube channel. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel so you can see other sci-fi stuff like this. I am Chase Randolph, also known as 34 of Spades, if you're in the same gaming circles as I. I'm the author of the science fiction book series, The Descendant Saga. The Descendant Saga was published in 2020 by a publishing company that didn't survive the pandemic, and now I am converting to self-publishing releasing a second edition of the first book coming this summer of 2024. For uh, updates on that, check out the official website, uh, link in the description down below. Here, on YouTube, I like to talk more about the science inside the science fiction. If you've already seen some of my other videos already, uh, leave a comment and tell me what you saw first that brought you here, and while you're here, would you be so kind as to drop a like on the video too? Uh, it helps the algorithm so other people can find our cool science videos and sci-fi books, and it costs you nothing to support the little guys like me, and I, I appreciate it in advance. Now, in my previous video, I talked briefly about the Fermi Paradox, and in doing so, I mentioned the filters related to that paradox. Filters, be they great or minor, are often called solutions to the Fermi Paradox, or in simpler terms, reasons why there is no other intelligent spacefaring life out there. One of the common proposed solutions is just that they are out there, and we as humans simply can't see the aliens, or they're hiding from us. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes here to talk about why that's bogus, because in space, even if no one can hear you scream, everyone can see your spaceship. There is no such thing as a stealthy spaceship. Let me explain why before you go jumping all over my coffin lid telling me I'm wrong. We take a step back and start at the beginning. Everyone is familiar with the stealth ship concept, right? Like the Birds of Prey in Star Trek, the Normandy in Mass Effect, or the Prowler in the Halo universe. Those are the first few examples that come to mind of stealth ships. It's one of the cliches of storytelling, and I've got a little montage of spaceships and sci-fi games going in the background, all of which have something wrong in the video. They were actually in a ship in orbit, in space, it wouldn't happen that way if you're actually there. Uh, usually it's something like walking on the deck even though there's no gravity, or the sound of an explosion even though they're in a vacuum, but today I'm just here to talk about stealth. Uh, I will tell you here and now, in no uncertain terms, there's no such thing as a stealthy spaceship. Let me explain why. I'm going to go into some hypothetical examples. Let's say your ship is powered down and has been drifting for a while. Heck, let's even call it a drone ship so you don't have to worry about temperature and internal environment. Just a ball of batteries and sensors. It's powered down, cold, and drifting in the void of space, without active thrust or emissions. Anything with a line of sight to this thing. Your small, cold, inert, drifting hunk of metal called a spaceship. It's still going to be detectable. With simple things like radar or lidar, and at that point, your probe is pretty useless. It's just drifting out there, not sending or receiving anything. I know lots of sci-fi stories like the aforementioned Prowler and Bird of Prey also include visual cloaking. They literally turn invisible to hide because stealth. Well, that is, in theory, possible using electromagnetic fields to bend light, so you can actually hide between the rays of light in doing so. That would be silly. Sure, it's a cool trick, but in space, that's useless. Hiding a person or a vehicle like that on the planet's surface is one thing that could be fairly useful. Other sensors beyond the Mark I eyeball, like thermals, aren't as common. But if you hide a spaceship with that method, like the Star Trek Bird of Prey is so famous for doing, well, that's, that's a waste. Because it will not defeat the other basic radar or LIDAR types of scanning devices, or even visual detection, because I know LIDAR is laser radar, and if the cloaking device is bending light rays, that electromagnetic field bending the light is going to be tuned to that light of the specific star you're orbiting. Their frequency, like infrared or ultraviolet light, will still be visible, and that basic LIDAR is going to be using very different frequency. It probably isn't even in the visible light spectrum, so, I mean, who cares? The light from the LIDAR won't care. On top of that, you're going to be emitting a whole bunch of new, powerful electromagnetic fields. Fields strong enough to bend light. And now you're just pumping it out there with a bunch of extra emissions, all kinds of stuff, just blasting out there. Because 
After all, it had to be a pretty strong field to bend light. And that's not nothing. So it'd be detectable too. With simple EMF scanners, probably. Even if you haven't been seen visually, that doesn't mean you aren't detectable through other means. And this hypothetical ship is just a little sensor ball, a drone ship satellite thing. Hardly what I would call a spaceship. But every time you add complexity to it, it's going to be easier to detect. Turn on a computer, run some electricity, draw from a battery. That's going to increase the temperature of the thing, make it stand out from the ambience of space. And if you have any active sensors, well, those are all going to emit singles too. Some other quick examples of passive sensors would be like radio receivers, cameras, magnetometers, things that measure incoming information but don't have an emitter to generate their own information. Then there are active sensors, like the radar and LiDAR I have been talking about, radio transmitters, so on. Anything that emits a signal provides its own energy for the measurements. Some of those basic things, stuff we already have, stuff we humans have been using for decades. Heck, radar was pretty standard on naval ships and aircraft as far back as the 1940s, and that was 80 years ago. On top of that, what's even the point of visual concealment? Space is big. And space combat is going to take place over vast distances. Like, if a hostile spaceship is orbiting the moon and fires missiles to shoot down the ISS in low Earth orbit, that's something like 240,000 miles away. Even then, they're probably going to launch their missiles, singular missiles, plural, uh, from the far side of the moon. So the missiles come from a different trajectory on a different flight path than expected. And that'll buy them a little bit of time, seconds at least. But that is about as close as you can get to stealth and surprise in spaceborne operations. Your best bet is to not have a line of sight between you and your quandary and hope they don't have any relayed communications through adjacent satellites or something. Anyway, I digress. Being 240,000 miles away, you're a tiny little speck, a blip on the radar. There's no point in visual cloaking because you'll be too small and presumably moving too fast to be easy to see. And if they did want to see you, you're going to be locked into a specific orbit, and it isn't going to be that hard to get a tracking camera to lock onto a moving target when you know what speed and direction it's going to be moving for the foreseeable future. On top of that, maneuvering in space is not something that can be done so quickly that you can just dodge a camera's tracking. Without the camera, though, if the thing you're trying to hide from is close enough to look out the window and see you with their eyeballs, you've made a big mistake already. Not including, like, the Dragon and Soyuz capsules that resupply the ISS going, you know, to and from the space station. I'm pretty sure that the people on board the ISS never want to see another spacecraft. You never want to be that close to another thing. Even if you're not physically far away, separated by a few thousand miles and, you know, on the same orbit even, there should be enough physical separation that you'll be visibly hidden by the curvature of the Earth. So again, you know, what's, what's the point of visual concealment? It's superfluous. I'll tell you why they do those kinds of things, like cloaking devices on stealth ships, like in Star Trek and Halo. It's so that the casual observer, who's you know, only halfway paying attention to what's on the TV because they're busy texting their side piece at the same time, can tell what's going on. They make it so it leaves absolutely no room to question what the other ship is doing, what it's good for. And it's... It's not a good or practical real-world thing, and it only persists as a storytelling device to make the ship's purpose painfully and immersion-breakingly obvious to all those involved in the story. And the visual cloaking is just the one, you know, most egregious example. Uh, like the Normandy in Mass Effect, they talk a lot about heat sinks and shunting energy into storage containers. and Maybe I'm dumb, but I don't know how that's... I understand how that's possible, but I don't know how that physically hides you from detection. Sure, you can have a heat sink, and, you know, like, everyone's computer, you know, if you're listening to this on a PC or a laptop, or even your smartphone, there is a CPU inside of that, and that is going to have a heat sink, which will sink the heat into that other inert piece of metal, to physically protect the CPU while it is operating, so it doesn't overheat and destroy itself. And that's kind of what they talk about in Mass Effect with the Normandy spaceship, because, you know, it's absorbing all of those extra emissions, not just heat, but all of the emissions, which I don't know how that's done, but that's what they say. And 
after some amount of time, a few hours, kind of like a submarine, those signals have to be vented because, you know, the heat sinks get full, you know, like you're theoretically, you know, in your laptop or your phone, it's possible that the heat sink can get hot enough. You know, the ambient temperature of the heat sink matches that of the CPU and you're no longer transferring heat and not protecting the hardware. This is the same concept, but when applied to stealth and detection, but it doesn't really work that way. Even if you are taking all of the heat and emissions from the spaceship's engines and just sinking it into this inert chunk of metal, that inert chunk of metal is still there. That just means you're detecting this other piece of metal in the spaceship and not the engine itself. So I don't know what good that does, how that really works. Um, I don't know if there's enough explanation in the game slash universe of Mass Effect for that to really be fully understood or if they just say that to, you know, make it sound cool. You know, and it's another common sci-fi thing. You just put plasma in front of something other, you know, some other word. And now it's a sci-fi, blah, blah, blah. You know, I have a plasma rifle, a plasma coil, a plasma capacitor, blah, 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 blah. Those are not real things. They're made up. And there's no real possible way, at least from my understanding of physics, to just absorb all of those kinds of emissions without also completely destroying the capability of all the equipment like sure you can absorb all of the emissions from an engine but now the engine because you've absorbed all of its emissions is not going to provide any propulsion so what's the point there's still going to be a waste product somewhere somehow usually in the form of heat and when space is a cold dead vacuum anything that is hot is going to be easy to detect on top of that I was only been talking about the smallest, most rudimentary kind of ship, more like a probe or a satellite than a spaceship. As ships get bigger and have more capabilities, they're going to make them even easier to detect. But if you have people and a cabin full of ambient air, that's going to be hot or cold relative to everything around it. That will make it easier to spot. And if you have people on board, they're probably going to want sustained power. Big reflective solar panels at the very least. Perhaps engines. There is no engine that doesn't make some kind of emission, be it a simple rocket engine, an ion thruster, a little hydrazine jet, a gamma jet emission out of the back of a miniature black hole, or some other sort of, you know, Orion Project nuclear pulse engine. Every form of propulsion is going to have some sort of emission, and you can't add to something and make it harder to find. Even a solar sail is going to make it a big, huge reflective surface that will be much easier to spot with just about every method in the book. If we can detect and catalog every chunk of space rock out in the solar system, there's not going to be any way of hiding a spaceship from something determined to find it. The key would be to either be in a place where no one is looking, or be unassuming enough that they don't bother looking at it to identify it. All that being said, what I will call normal space combat would be very different than in the movies and video games, like Star Trek or Star Wars. Not only because there's no such thing as stealth ships, I hope you can feel the air quotes around that one, uh, but because the spaceships don't fly like X-Wings. They don't zip around in formation after being launched from a carrier like fighter jets. Real space combat is probably going to be fought with missiles over vast distances, at least portions of orbital periods. Give it 10 minutes, and they'll cover the breadth of Europe. So any... So only a little bit of orbital separation, and you'll at least have the horizon between you and your target. Without stealth, it'll all be about speed and aggression. Position will be supremely important. It will be more like a game of chess, moving your orbital assets to get the upper hand, the use of countermeasures, jamming, sea whiz style anti-missile systems, decoys, and counter-countermeasures. And yes, it will be in orbit. The gravity wells of various celestial bodies will determine the fields of battle. I'm not saying there won't be missiles or vessels or weapons traveling between the bodies, but like in Star Wars, where the X-Wings and TIE fighters fly around and dogfight like old fighter planes, that's all fiction. The planet they're orbiting around will impart its own angular momentum and change all the arithmetic in the equation. The gravity well will be half the battle itself, much less the other spaceships in the situation. Beyond that, 
There's very little likelihood that there will be combat between the planets or the stars. The vastness of space is such that it would not be feasible for two spacecraft to find each other in the emptiness between solar systems to engage in combat. You are more likely to find a wayward coconut drifting in the middle Pacific, or a message in the bottle that washes up on the beaches of Portugal. And if they did cross each other's paths in some weird way, their combined speed between the two would be such that even if they were able to detect and watch each other from great distances, that the time they had when they actually had proximity with each other would be very brief. If a ship heading to Jupiter crosses paths with a ship headed from Jupiter to Earth, their closing speeds between the two would be insanely fast, and the window of time where they would be close to each other would be extremely brief. I know that space combat is portrayed wrong in the media, and that's a whole other tangent I need not rant about any longer. I'll, I'll get back on topic. Don't take my disparaging remarks too seriously. I'm not trying to tell you your favorite fandom is trash. I'm just trying to illustrate the point that the common public perception of spaceships and space combat and the distances involved in these activities is very skewed and not correct. We have in the genre what is most commonly referred to as hard sci-fi, where the story is written without breaking the laws of physics. No supreme examples of that are coming immediately to mind. There are classics like The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, Ender's Game, and The Forever War. But they're more focused on person-to-person -person combat and not really spaceship versus spaceship. They are pretty good, you know, science, sci-fi examples, though. And at least in my reading endeavors, the older books, 1950s, 60s, 70s, 40s sci-fi, while usually very off in their estimations of technology, either completely underestimating or way overestimating specific technologies, the science itself inside those stories, the physics behind it, is usually pretty good, usually better than what we have in more contemporary books. I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to step on any toes. Anyway, I'll get off my horse about it. To summarize, like I said earlier, if we can detect all the little inner chunks of rock and the far-off orbits of cold, dead comets in our solar system, then we can find your spaceship too, even if it's visibly cloaked, even if it's not emitting any signals. If it exists, it can be found, even with fairly rudimentary, already extant equipment. Anyways, thanks for listening to my little rant about how stealth ships are silly, because anyone's going to be able to find it even with simple equipment. And if you're going to fight in space, you might as well just full send it and hope for the best. With all the shrapnel up there and the extreme relative velocities, everyone's going to have a bad time anyway. Thanks for your time. Remember to give the video a like if you did like it. You know, thanks for hanging out until the end. I'll see you in the next one where I'll try to nerd even harder. I don't know what we're going to nerd out about yet, but we're going to nerd. I guarantee it.